Hello and welcome to our time of worship together. It's lovely that you could join us. I wonder who you are. I wonder what your name is. I wonder if you have a nickname or if you're known as something else. Maybe your mum or dad. Maybe you're an uncle or an auntie. Maybe you have a nickname that's stuck. I wonder who you are and I wonder what your name is. Today we're going to be thinking about names and how important they can be sometimes and how sometimes you just are who you are and there is no name that we can give to that. Please join us in our worship today. We're coming to God together and we're going to say a prayer together. For those of you listening on the telephone system, I hope you can follow along. For those of us watching on YouTube, the words are going to appear on the screen as we say together our Moses prayer, which we'll read again and again over the coming weeks as we travel with Moses and God's people out of Egypt and into a whole new world. We say together our prayer of Moses. When we can only see what is before us, Lord, lift our eyes to see beyond. When we can only see what is around us, lift our eyes to see beyond. When we can only see all that we have lost, Lord, lift our eyes to see beyond. When we can only see change and upheaval, Lord, lift our eyes to see beyond. Show us, O Lord, how far we have come. Remind us of how you have stayed with us all that way. Reassure us that you still walk beside us. Restore our faith in all the new things you reveal and the new paths in which you lead us. And though we may not recognise the places we now inhabit, may we trust in your goodness, which is for every generation. Lord, lift our eyes to see beyond. Amen. Our opening praise today is Be still for the presence of the Lord.
coming weeks, we're going to be journeying with Moses in our time together. These are the lectionary texts for the next couple of months. And it gives us an opportunity to really explore the story of Moses and the story of God's people as they went out to a new place with no idea of what was before them. A place that for me sounds quite familiar to where we are in our post lockdown but still COVID world. When we're feeling our way, where we're learning as we go, where we are aware we can't go back to what we've done before and we need to go forward. But we can only go forward one step at a time and with God leading us. Here's a short video just to remind you about the birth of Moses, what had happened in the state of Egypt between Jacob and his son Joseph, he of the technical dream coat, and his brothers arriving, and where we meet Moses at our reading today in front of a bush in a place called Midian. God's story, Moses. So part of God's story is about a guy named Moses and it begins like this. When Moses was born, God's special family, the Israelites, were living in Egypt as slaves. But there were so many Israelites that Pharaoh, Egypt's ruler, was afraid they might attack him. So he ordered that they work extra hard and made a law that all new baby boys had to be killed. Well, baby Moses' mom didn't want him to die, so she came up with a plan. She put him in a waterproof basket and hid it in the Nile River. Before long, Pharaoh's daughter, the princess, showed up. She found the basket and realized Moses was one of the babies her dad was trying to kill. But instead of hurting Moses, she adopted him. He grew up in the palace like a prince. Now Moses should have felt really special and loved, but he felt bad that his people were slaves while he lived in the palace. So he ran away and tried to help them. Problem is, they didn't want a prince around. Moses didn't feel like he belonged anywhere so he ran away again. This time, he went to a place called Midian. There, he married a lady named Zipporah and worked for her dad, Jethro. One day, he was taking care of Jethro's sheep when he saw a bush on fire. As Moses looked more closely, the inside of the bush called out, Moses, Moses. Kids, would you answer a burning bush that yells your name? Well, Moses did. He said, here I am. Then the bush introduced itself. It was God appearing as fire. And God told Moses that he could see how his family was suffering as slaves. Since God loves his family, he wanted to rescue them through Moses. Now you'd think Moses would be excited since he had wanted to help his people, but he wasn't. He didn't think he was special enough to get a job from God. He said, why me? God reminded him, I'll be with you. He even told Moses exactly what to say to the Egyptians. But Moses didn't think anyone would believe that God had appeared to a regular guy like him, a guy who didn't even belong anywhere. So God gave Moses three miracles to prove that God was with him. First, God let Moses turn his staff into a snake and back. Next, Moses put his hand in his cloak. It came out with leprosy. Then he did it again to cure it. Finally, God showed Moses how to turn water into blood. But even after God showed him all this, Moses was still afraid that nobody would listen to him. I don't talk well, he said. I stutter and stammer. Then God asked Moses, who makes a man able to talk? God is the one who makes us. And he wanted Moses to remember that and trust him. But Moses begged, please send anybody else. Fortunately, God loves us even when we're afraid to trust him and we don't realize how special we are to him. He let Moses bring his brother Aaron along to do the talking. After that, Moses finally realized he belonged in God's family. He didn't have to run away anymore, so he obeyed God and followed him. He took his wife and sons to Egypt to tell the Israelites that God was going to rescue them. The Israelites believed that God was with Moses, and they were so excited to be rescued that they worshiped God right away. And that's the story of Moses. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God's family lived in Egypt. They were slaves. Pharaoh said baby boys must die. Moses' mom had a plan. Moses was adopted. He ran away. Moses returned to his people. He ran away. 
God appeared as fire. Moses argued with God. Finally, Moses obeyed. He knew he belonged in God's family. And that's a part of God's story. Moira Adam is going to read to us from scripture the story of Moses and the burning bush. Today's reading is from the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. One day, while Moses was taking care of the sheep and goats of his father-in-law Jesso, the priest of Midian, he led the flock across the desert and came to Sinai, the holy mountain. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him as a flame coming from the middle of a bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire, but that it was not burning up. This is strange, he thought. Why isn't the bush burning up? I will go closer and see. When the Lord saw that Moses was coming closer, he called to him from the middle of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. He answered, Yes, here I am. God said, Do not come any closer. Take off your sandals because you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So Moses covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have seen how cruelly my people are being treated in Egypt. I have heard them cry out to be rescued from their slave drivers. I know all about their sufferings. And so I have come down to rescue them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of Egypt to a spacious land, one which is rich and fertile and in which the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites now live. I have indeed heard the cry of my people, and I see how the Egyptians are oppressing them. Now I am sending you to the king of Egypt, so that you can lead my people out of his country. But Moses said, God, I am nobody. How can I go to the king and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you, and when you bring the people out of Egypt, you will worship me on this mountain. That will be the proof that I have sent you. God bless to us this reading of his holy word. Amen. What's your name? I'm Margaret. It means pearl or so I'm told. But I'm named after my granny Wiley. And that for me means much more than being called pearl. Moses had a name that meant out of. It also meant son of. In Hebrew it meant out of and actually the fact that Moses was pulled out of the river and eventually led his people out of Egypt is very apt. But in Egyptian Moses was a, a part of a name that was used to mean son of. So you would get Tutmos, son of Tut. He had a name that was both Hebrew and Egyptian and that's the place where we first meet Moses, a man who was both Hebrew and Egyptian. He was the right man in the right place to take God's people where God needed them to go. Just as an aside, his big sister Miriam, who watched him as the basket settled in the reeds and it's quite possible that Moses' mother knew exactly where the Pharaoh's daughter went to bathe and placed the basket just near where she would find him. Miriam means rebellion. A strong woman, even as a young child who was willing to go up to the daughter of the Pharaoh and offer her mother as a nursemaid. We're going to hear about Miriam later on in our story when she joins the men in leading God's people as they travel towards a promised land. They don't know where, they don't know when and they don't even know how but Miriam helps to lead them there. Um. When we first meet Moses in our reading today, he's in Midian, 
watching the sheep of his father-in-law Jethro, when he sees a bush that has set alight. Now, in our cartoon, we saw a small bush. For many of us in the Church of Scotland, we grew up with the image of a burning bush that was more like a tree. Whichever it was, it doesn't hugely matter because seeing a tr tree or a bush that is completely aflame and yet not consumed is something phenomenal, something beyond all reckoning. And Moses knew that it was something beyond all reckoning. And in time, he knew that it was God in the flames. And he approaches and God tells him to take off his shoes. Take off any barrier between him and the holy ground on which he's standing. And to come. He tells Moses he has a role for him. He has a calling. That he is needed to help lead God's people where God needs them to go. Moses, of course, says, are you sure? Me? Really? But God reassures Moses that he is the right man. And that God will be beside him wherever he goes and whatever he does. Later in Exodus 3, we hear Moses speaking to God and he says, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you. They'll ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. Moses says, well, who shall I say sent me? And God says, me. And Moses says, well, what is your name? And God says, I am what I am. I am who I am. I just am. To this day, Jewish people don't ever say the name of God. They either write it as G-D or they just pronounce it and say it as the Lord. The Lord sent Moses. He who shall not be named because I am what I am. As many of you know, one of my favourite songs from when the musicals is from La Casual Fall and it says, I am what I am. And it's about a character who realises he has to live his true self. He has to be who he is inside and not put on a front to the world. And he sings, I am what I am. No regrets, no excuses. I am what I am. God asks us just to accept that God is what God is. That God is who God is and that can be hard because it's much easier for us to put God in a box it's much e easier for us if we can narrow down exactly what God is and make God fit into our parameters but God is bigger than all of that God is the creator the redeemer the savior the guide God is the three in one, the one in three. God is the connected power of the universe. God is the love that binds all things together. God is what God is. God is genderless. We tend to use he because we talk about God the Father, but that's from an old system and we just inherited it and use it. But God is genderless. God is not he nor she. God is God. God just is. God is the great I am. As we think about going forward with Moses over the coming weeks and months, we need to get things straight. We need to start things on the right foot. And that means taking off our shoes, taking off all that we might use to distance ourselves from God, to go barefoot in the presence of God, to come close, 
and stand on holy ground and accept who God is for us. Accept that God is beyond our wildest expectations, beyond our possibilities, beyond what we could ever imagine. And we have to remember that God knows us and he knows our name. God knows who St Margaret's forefront are. And when we go forward, we must remember who we are, just as we are. Stripping away all the excess, stripping away all the things that have defined us in the past to just what defines us now. A community of hope. A worshipping fellowship. A friendship across a community. We are St Margaret's, we all are, and we're ready to go where God leads. Amen. Gordon Menmuir is going to lead us in our prayers for others. Dear Lord, we come to you with our prayers for others. For family, friends, neighbours and our friends at St Margaret's Church in Forford, we pray that you keep them safe in these uncertain times. We pray for doctors, nurses, paramedics and all other hospital staff who have been working tirelessly and putting their own lives at risk to save the lives of those who have fallen ill. We pray for those who are still ill and weak even after all this time, and trust that you will give them strength. We pray for the emergency services, the police, fire service, etc., who work long hours and often in dangerous situations to serve us and keep us safe. Dear Lord, we pray for the continued work of the scientists searching for a vaccine for the COVID-19 virus and hope that a breakthrough will be made soon. We thank and pray for the teachers in our schools, for the work they do to teach our children, as well as keeping them safe while doing so. Our young people have been through a stressful time recently. We think of the sick and elderly who are in homes at present, and who may be feeling lonely or neglected. Please be with them. Please, Lord, bring aid and peace to the countries of the world who are in a state of famine or war, sometimes at no fault of their own, and who need help to lead a better and safer life. God be with us in all we do. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Our closing praise today has new words but a tune we know really well and it's called O oh God You Called to Moses.
nice to worship with you. I hope you've had a chance to think about who you are when you reflect on who God is, the great I am. I wonder what your name means. Maybe you could find out if you don't already know. Maybe you're named after someone like I am and actually what your name means and what it means to you are very different things. Thank you for joining us for worship. We will be continuing with our online services, both here on video and on the telephone service. But as of the 6th of September, we'll also be offering in-person worship in the sanctuary each Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock from the 6th of September onwards. It's not going to be as it's been before. Things are different now. You'll be asked to wear a mask. You'll be asked to queue at two metres distant from the next household outside on the gravel. We'll then ask you each in turn to come into the vestibule and give your name and a contact number for track and trace. You'll then be asked to put your donation towards the church or your envelope into the plate before sanitising your hands. You'll then have to wait until a door duty member can guide you into the church and take you to your seat. You won't be able to choose a seat anymore and you may not be sat next to your friends. This is because each household has to sit two metres distant from every other household and that means that we have to fill the church from the front to the back to do that so that nobody is passing anybody else on the aisle. We hope you understand. It means that there's only 24 households can be sat in our church. That's either 24 individuals or 24 couples or families. Up to a maximum of 50 people each week. Because we can't fit everybody in every week, we're asking that you consider whether you might be able to continue worshipping either by video or by telephone in your own home some weeks to allow others a chance to worship in person too. But if you do want to come and worship in person at the church, the welcome will be as big as it has ever been. The joy of gathering will be as big as it has ever been, despite everything that will be different. So we look forward to seeing you. But first, we ask that you please phone in advance to let us know that you hope to come. That will reserve you a seat at our worship, because if you turn up on the day, we can't guarantee any more that we'll have room to fit you in. So please phone in advance from the Monday onwards, and the number is 07557 381932. That's 07557 381932. If you are a St Margaret's member, you will receive a letter through your doorpost with all that information on it. And if you're not a member, the same applies for you. All are always welcome. But please do book in advance to let us know to expect you. You will be asked to wear a mask throughout the service. So please bring a mask with you, although we do have some available for those who don't have. You'll also be asked not to sing or to say words aloud, although we do have dispensation to say the Lord's Prayer together, albeit slightly quieter behind our masks. I hope that you continue to worship with us online and in person as we travel together as God's people into a new and promised land of milk and honey and all good things. In the meantime, stay safe, stay well, and stay in the love of God. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and those whom you love, for this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>